Hassans and welcome to Christianity, Islam and the Negro Truth, a reply part one. Remember, as with all economic systems, there were a political superstructure and a crown of ideology which made what was profitable right by law, custom and ethics. One absurd point in the pro-slavery argument was that the snake in the Garden of Eden was indeed a man of color, anonymous, and this is from the publication Slavery and the Abolition of the Slave Trade Collection, 1700 to 1925, including an introductory essay by Lawrence Reddick, and this was published 1924. And from Harry H. Johnston, the Negro, more than any other human type, has been marked out by his mental and physical characteristics as the servant of other races. And this is from the book, A History of the Colonization of Africa by Alien Races, published 1899. And in this response video, from our previous video on Islam, Christianity and Negro Truth, we got some comments that helps show how the brain of the Negro works. A comment from a so-called African-American who thinks the Nkalaway, who claims that the Negroes are Aborigine and that the slave trade no longer happened, is saying the truth. And then another comment from a Negro from the lower Niger area, from Biafra and Ambazonia area of West and Central Africa today, who also thinks that Simon Eba is actually fighting for Biafra and Biafra freedom and supporting Namdekano the detained leader of the freedom movement for the actualization of Biafra freedom. So please remember that the slave master has a very good understanding of the brain of the Negro and how the Negro reason. He knows to pick the right resource to be used against the Negroes and there will always be Negroes against themselves. Bear that in mind. He just needs to get one person and use him against the Negroes. Flashback. The slave master will always use Negroes against Negroes. Take note of this. Remember, it was the Negroes that were the brutal Negroes used against other Negroes to sustain the slave trade at that time. The house Negro and the field Negro, which is exactly the same thing he's playing at today. When the slave master was changing the slave trade design to what he called colonialism, he learned to use the Negroes against themselves as well to sell the golden calf of Christianity to what was Guinea, but conquered and annexed by Negritia into what is today called Nigeria. He used a Negro called Samuel Crowder and freed Negroes from the New World as missionaries just to sell his golden calf of Christianity. And please never forget, they could not sell Islam at that time because they knew that the Muslims were the slave hunters and the Negroes would never listen to them, but would listen to their fellow Negroes who they had converted to Christianity using the slave trade. And so the slave master is not doing anything different now. Whether it is the Nkalaway for the so-called African Americans to be deceived into believing that it could be anything but Negroes or Ethiopians as they were, or in Nigeria where the slave master and his accomplices have commissioned one Simon Eba and using him to destroy the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, that are agitating for freedom of Biafra from the slave ship of one Nigeria. And never forget, the reason they are trying to do that is so that they can do to Nandekano what they did to Steve Biko of South Africa. And so here are the comments from Destroy the Confederacy and he or she wrote, Concerning the Nkalaway, even if what you are saying is possibly true and I doubt it, you have not proven your case. Moreover, what does it profit us to consider ourselves native when the world says that we are African and some Africans have offered us something that America, US has never given us, real citizenship. Economically speaking, there is no profit in being in the red man. But because all the world's wealth is in Africa, we need to be in the black. That is what the colonizer was telling the world in the propaganda movie Black Panther. Please bear in mind that this person thinks that the Nkalaway can be saying the truth. And from the Biafran or an impostor or whoever he is, supposedly a Negro from the lower Niger struggling for freedom from the yoke of one Nigeria named T. Us. And he or she wrote, Dear bro, 
I am one of your strong followers, but honestly speaking, your opinion about Simon Eba is false. And the worst is that you said that we Brafrans should sheepishly and cowardly be following DOS, knowing that the DOS is evil, totally compromised. If indeed you think this way about Simon Eba, I guess you must be joking. We Biafrans follow Simon Eba just like we follow our great leader, MNK, and not even you can deceive our people anymore. Please bear in mind that the person writing this is likely a descendant of the slave hunters. And he goes on to say, only time will tell if your opinion about Simon Eba is false or right. But remember, only the truth can stand the test of time. Honestly, I'm looking forward to this day and if you will sincerely apologize to Epa. So while he's still telling us that only time will tell whether we are right or wrong, he's also asking that we apologize to the man. So in this video, we're going to show him or her that Simon Eba is not fighting for any Biafra, but he has been sent by the slave master and his accomplices to infiltrate IPOB divert the attention of the people from the freedom they are looking for, destroy the indigenous people of Biafra as a group to allow them to within them can whatever pleases them so that that way nobody can speak out against them anymore. And our favorite word, Soto, which is what describes the slave master. Remember the quote that claimed that the serpent that tempted Eve in the garden was a man of color and a quick look at that material of 1924 the slavery and abolition collections it tells us clearly here that one absurd point in the pro-slavery argument was that the snake in the garden of eden was indeed a man of color my own studies call attention to vast abuse and ridicule against the Negro which filled the antebellum press. Our interest is for you to see that if it was a real snake as in the way you know it as an animal, snakes do not speak. But at least nobody would have told you it's a man of color because at that time, because the slave master could produce slaves from sleeping with Negro women, that's why they started calling the Negroes colored because they had their blood in them the problem with many negroes is that they don't believe that such evil of such magnitude as the slave trade could have been perpetrated by any group that is the biggest problem so this is why you see the slave master went from behind to send them Calloway to come and tell people that it couldn't have happened but then the essence of this word subtle is just that the slave master expects that you don't know what he is doing. This is why he had to go kidnap Nandekano and then bring somebody like Simon Eba to come and start telling you something else, believing that you will give him the type of support that you gave Nandekano while he is the one controlling Simon Eba, the same way he controls his slave hunting accomplices in governments and politics all over the area. That's exactly what he's trying to do with Simon Eba. And so, in addition to the slave master's subtle nature, we have to look at the patterns. So to understand the slave master's ways, it is important to understand patterns. The same pattern is applied to Negroes everywhere, whether in Europe, the Middle East, the Arab world, or in the Americas. The slave master's evil follows the same pattern. And to better understand this pattern, we have to use something a bit more advanced than just the ordinary pattern that you know. So in the slave master's mathematics class, for example, in calculus, you will see they will tell you that integral x raised to the power n with respect to x is equal to x raised to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 n plus c and so the integral of 3x raised to the power 5 dx would be something like 3x raised to the power 6 over 6 plus c but whether you studied mathematics you became a professor in the slave masters calibrations whatever term you used all we know is that this thing is just pattern it is that pattern that you can use to deceive everyone wherever it is, even if it works, even if it applies to some calculation of a curve and its area. The important thing to note here is that it's simply a pattern which we shall look at in a different video. Our interest is to show you that the slave master is not as advanced and sophisticated as you think he is. So don't just believe whatever he's saying. That's the subtle part of him. 
use your common sense. Common sense is the biggest weapon against the slave master and his evil against the Negroes. And a simple example is if the slave master destroyed the language of Negroes and their way of life during the slave trade and doing the same in West and Central Africa today, we see the same pattern. Remember, it is why we all speak English in that area or French or any of the language of the slave trading countries at that time. And you can remember the case of Cameroon that belonged to Germany and they split it into two, one to France and one to England. This is why one part speaks English, Ambazonia, and the other part speaks French. So whether you believe us or not, you are a slave as far as you are from those areas. And if we started with that of the Nkalawe, who claimed, albeit falsely, that 98% of so-called African Americans are in fact native Indians and are owed millions. Remember, the millions there is a bait, it's like a decoy to make some of them believe. Remember, this is why the slave master makes sure the Negroes remain poor, so that they can easily be deceived with crumbs from the master's table. The same thing you see with Simon Eber and the likes of Nelly of Fable. They have been paid little crumbs, and that is why they are now deceiving their own people. And so, to very easily debunk Den Calloway and his uh, childish lies, the common sense question here would be, if in a family of 10 children, 8 are girls and 2 are boys, what percentage of the children are girls? We will say 8 over 10 times 100 over 1. These are things we learned in the slave master's classroom. And based on that simple common sense mathematics, if the Intalloway claims that 98% of so-called African Americans are Native American Indians, we should expect to see total number of African Americans being something like say X and total number of Native American Indians classified as so-called African Americans being something like Y. So what percentage of so-called African Americans are Native Indians? So it will just be like Y over X or X over Y times 100 which will give us that 98% he's talking about. But this person does not know the total number of so-called African Americans. He does not know the total number that are classified as either African or Native Indians. But then he wants to tell us that the woolly-haired Ethiopian, now called Negro, is now the same as Indian, which there collapses his argument. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, we can prove it a bit further by referencing Ethiopia Unbound, Studies in Race Emancipation by Kesley Hefford, and this was published 1911. Here we see that one ever feels his trueness, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body, whose dogged strength alone keeps it from being torn asunder. Ah, there is the rub, poor Ethiopia. How sorely had the iron of oppression entered into the very soul of thy erring children. Now self-consciousness obviously depends upon self-revelation after which comes self-realization. But has the Ethiopian sojourning in America and for that matter even in Liberia and in Sierra Leone ever realized himself? So our question to the Nkalaway is this, when you are claiming that the Negro and the Indian are the same, are they the Ethiopian that we are talking about here, the Ethiopian sojourning in America? Let us prove it further by referencing the war in America, Negro slavery and the Bible, a political religious essay by William Moister and this was published 1862. Here we see that God has so constituted this race which in the times of the scriptures we are called Ethiopians and which we call Negroes from their color that they might become the inhabitants of the equatorial or warm regions of the earth. These black people, however, were placed in Africa alone, which is almost entirely a thorid region. And as America had also a large warm region with no Negroes in it, it was necessary that the purpose of God might be fulfilled, that Ethiopians should be sent to it, and therefore we are directly told here that God sent them there. So our question to you that thinks that Den Calloway is telling you the truth is, is the Native American also Indian, also Ethiopian? 
the same way he thinks or he's trying to misinform you with remember believe it or not the slave master is the devil speaking through the serpent then Calloway. the same thing they are trying to do with Idu and Biafra which we shall look at shortly so you see here that they are talking about Ethiopians and now we ask you in one of the Calloway's videos you see that he was claiming that the people there were Ethiopians that they are not Ethiopians because he is ignorant of that fact like we told you the slave master is never smart but he is a subtle beast and here is a side note on negro education negro education is merely conditioning and seasoning with a different name we mentioned professor soludo as our proof positive that slave master's education is neither wisdom nor intelligence nigeria today contains the two biggest sources of negro slaves the bite of biafra and bite of benin nigeria is designed with slavery and the slave trade in mind and for those who think Soludo can succeed when none before him succeeded. If Anambra became something like Europe or America or Dubai, or at least created more jobs than any other states, don't you know that all the Nigerians will troop down to that state and it will collapse? That is why they make sure they impose their slave hunting accomplices on every state. It is the British hiding behind their slave hunting accomplices, the Fulanese. So permit us to apply our simple common sense to this question here. Does Soludo know how many people in Anambra? If so, how does he know who is employed and who is not? So how can he succeed when he doesn't know how many people he's supposed to take care of? Just think about it yourself, based on common sense. In a family of say five or six people, you were asked to prepare food for that family. If you are not told how many people to prepare food for, you will naturally use your common sense to prepare it for the total number of people in that family. But if you are told that only three people will be eating, that will allow you to plan for the quantity of food to prepare but in those places this is why they are always against censors if you check you'll see that in 2016 there was supposed to be a census but their slave hunting accomplices in Buhari who is a Fulani came in and carefully avoided it because they don't want that number the slave master has a policy of ruling through the minorities and that is because he believes that the Negroes in majority do not have enough common sense to rule that's why they make sure that wherever it is be it in Africa or in the diaspora they prevent the Negro from ever ruling it doesn't matter how you see what we're saying you just need to investigate it yourself so let us quickly reference the negro question by george w cable and this was published 1898 here we see that majority rule is an unfortunate term in that it falsely implies this very thing whereas its mission in human affairs is to remove precisely this danger in fact a minority always rules at least it always can all the great majority ever strives for is the power to choose by what and what kind of a minority it shall be ruled so this is why you see them jumping all over the place for what they call Igbo presidency which shall never happen the only way it can happen is that they have planted a fulani in the negro areas and then use them to say this is an Igbo president because they speak Igbo. Like we told you about Adobe Tricia Mobani, people like Nelly of Fabudem, most of them would have been planted long ago to be used for this purpose, including Time on Ever. And he goes on further to say, what that choosing majority shall consist of, and hence the wisdom and public safety of its choice, will depend mainly upon the attitude of those who hold against the power of mere numbers, the far greater powers of intelligence, of virtue, and of wealth. Remember, they claim that the Negroes were not human, and that belief has not changed. And going further on then Calloway's lies, he claims that Indian slaves were shipped from America to Europe, Spain, precisely, according to Christopher Columbus in 1492. This is a lie because the slave trade started circa 1434, and there is no way they would have started shipping slaves to the New World in 1434, and then start shipping them back in 1492. And he went on to write, they were then shipped from Spain, that is Europe, to Africa as commodity for African resources in the 1630s, which is another lie. And we are sure by now you would have started asking, what is your evidence? How did you know? Since we were not born by then, then Calloway was not born by then, we were not taught all this in class, but we can read, we have common sense, but then Calloway does not. And even if he does, 
the slave master is telling him what to tell you and that's because the slave master believes you don't have reasoning capacity of a human to understand when he is lying so let us reference the history of slavery and the slave trade ancient and modern the african slave trade and the political history of slavery in the united states compiled from authentic materials by w o blake and this was published 1860 here we see that as early as 1434, Antonio Gonzalez, a Portuguese captain, landed on this coast and carried away with him some Negro boys whom he sold to one or two Moorish families in the south of Spain. The act seemed to have provoked some criticisms at the time, but from that day it became customary for the captains of vessels landing on the Gold Coast or other parts of the coast of Guinea to carry away a few young Negroes of both sexes. Now ask them, Calloway, where are you getting your own from? We have provided our own. So if you want to debunk ours, you just need to debunk the book and tell us that the book published in 1860 was lying and tell us how you know since you were not born by then. And then Calloway went on to further lie that these Indian slaves were then shipped back to America from Africa and classified as African slaves. Remember, at the time then Calloway was talking about, the area was not called Africa, it was still called Negro land. And to cover every part because we are objective, this is why we don't tell you to believe us, we tell you to go and read it yourself, to research it so that you won't say we told you or anyone else told you know it yourself use your common sense it was for a reason that the slave master did not teach us all these in his class so it's incumbent on all of us to go and study and read and above all if you looked at biafra and ambazonia today and you see that all of them are pretending not to see what is going on there including biden including the u.s that's because they are in on it they know what they are doing and so to be objective and also show us how the slave master leverages on one sentence or another to deceive his victims, like we told you, his target with this Den Callaway false narrative is the next generation. He has been doing it. We always ask you, have you tried to find out how he changed Abyssinia to Ethiopia and Ethiopians became Negroes? So we reference Adventures of an African Slaver, being a true account of the life of Captain Theodore Kennot trader in gold, ivory, and slaves on the coast of Guinea, his own story as told in the year 1854 to Brands Mayer, now edited with an introduction by Malcolm Cowley, and this was published in 1928. Here we see that having lasted nearly four centuries, the great days of the slave trade were drawing to their close. Notice four centuries, but then Calloway is telling you that it was done by one ship carrying people from America then to Spain then back to America and called African slaves. Bear that in mind. This is where he is getting that lie from. They had begun in 1442 if a date must be chosen when the explorer Antam Gonzalez had carried 10 black amours to Lisbon. His purpose was to save their souls. Columbus, who opened two continents to slavery, himself shipped home 500 Indians, suggesting that they be sold in the markets of Seville. Sir John Hawkins made three slaving voyages from Guinea to the West Indies. Sir Francis Drake and John Paul Jones, the sea heroes of two nations, had helped to carry black cargoes. Great sovereigns and capitalists had engaged in the same commerce, among others, they were Henry the Navigator, Ferdinand the Catholic, the Emperor Charles V, Elizabeth and her rival, Philip II, Charles II of England, who first coined guineas to celebrate the trade, Philip V of Spain, Queen Anne, etc. But our interest is to show you where he got that they were shipped from here to there. That's trying to suggest that the Negroes are not even human. Remember, the reason the slave master first told us that the Negroes were selling themselves, sons will sell their father and all that, was because he claimed that the Negroes were like cattle. They had no languages, they lived on trees and were naked, and that God made them for their own benefit and enjoyment. That was what he was using to deceive his own people. And if you look at the image on the so-called slave ship it does not mean that the negroes were packed to lie down this way it was a mere passenger ship but designed for the slave trade with military men in it these images came from when the slave master and his accomplices were claiming that the negroes were enjoying the trade and they were not suffering so the abolitionists obviously created these images 
to present to the world that this is the type of suffering humans were being put through in the slave trade. But leaving that apart for now, we see that they coined guineas as a British unit of currency to celebrate the trade. So the pounds you hear today was not the original currency but guineas to celebrate the slaves they were capturing from there. Remember, these people got the name Great Britain from the fact that they were the biggest slave traders at that time. And a quick look at the 1805 map of the area, we see where it says Upper Guinea and we can also see Biafra there. This was why they commissioned Simon Eva and Nelly of Fable to come and deceive the people with Tidu because they still think that the people do not have common sense. They are still animals that cannot reason for themselves. That's why the Inkaloe has the temerity to tell you that Negroes are now the same as Indians and Simon Eva has the temerity to tell you that Eri that Madison and Kano talked about is the same as the do that Nelly of Ebu is talking about. And if you are an adult that believes Nelly of Ebu and she tells you who and who could have sold Nan the Kano, if you have common sense, if you can reason like an adult, ask yourself, where was Nelly of Ebu when all this were happening? Can't you see that the pattern was the same pattern that Buhari then used when they told you that Jonathan and Dezani had stolen all the money? Which is akin to Nelly of Ebu telling you who sold Nan the Kano, how his brothers betrayed him and all that. Now ask yourself, how can Nelly of Fable now know who could have betrayed Nam the Kano if she was not part of it? And a closer look at the map of Africa, we see Guinea, which formed the unit of the British currency before the pounds. It was because of the Guinea trade, which was the slave trade. And so we challenge the Nkaloe or anyone that believes him to show us the map that shows where they captured their own Negroes from and shipped them to the New World. And going further here, we see that the traffic in slaves had been a cause of war between England and Holland, between England and Spain. It had passed from one nation to another with the treaties of peace. And so you can very easily see why they are all united against Biafra and Ambazonia today. You are their slaves, whether you believe us or not. If you doubt it, we prove it to you. But leaving that apart for now, we see that the Inkaloe goes on to lie that by the late 1700s, African slave women began to intermarry with actual imported African men. If you look at this, it makes no sense. So African slave women began to marry imported African men by 1700s, which is a lie. And we can prove this first by asking who approved for the so-called African men to marry the African women. And we reference the story of the life of John Anderson, the fugitive slave. And this was published in 1863. Here we see that the genealogy of an American slave is traced only through the maternal line. The progenitors on the male side are rarely known in fact and are never recognized in law. A slave in law has no father. So which father was then Calloway we're talking about that African men started marrying African women. Now remember, this is the origin of what you call father-in-law. Where in Western Central Africa, we're not sure what happens elsewhere. When you get married to a lady, the father becomes your father-in-law. That was how it was for the slaves. If you get married to a slave, the slave master that owned that slave will be your father-in-law and he has to approve before you can get married. So then Calloway should tell us which slave master was approving for these marriages to go on. And we further reference the interesting narrative of the life of Olo de Guiano, Augustus Vasa, the African, written by himself. And this was published in 1794. Remember, this was a British slave in England. But the so-called African-Americans that are believing the lies of the Galloway think that the slave trade was only in America. They don't know that it happened in the Middle East, it happened in Brazil, in Cuba, in Jamaica, and so on. But we see here where the author writes, a note to the reader, an invidious falsehood having appeared in the oracle of the 25th and the star of the 27th of April 1792 with a view to hurt my character and to discredit and prevent the sale of my narrative asserting that I was born in the Danish island of Santa Cruz in the West Indies. Our interest is for you to see when their lies started but he goes on to conclude by saying that under this appeal, I now offer this edition of my narrative to the candid reader and to the friends of humanity, hoping it may still be the means, in its measure, of showing the enormous cruelties practiced on my feeble brethren and strengthening the general simulation now prevailing in this country, that is England, to put a speedy end to a traffic both cruel and unjust, Edinburgh, June 1792. 
and the good thing was that he indicated that he was an African. And further here he wrote, My master was several times offered by different gentlemen 100 guineas for me, but he always told them, he would not sell me to my great joy. So did you see the guinea there, which was what the British used as their currency to celebrate the slave trade from the coast of Guinea? That's why they have to change name. So if you see them fighting against the name Biafra, and then Nelly Ofewe is telling you he do in the spirit, always bear in mind that whenever you hear them saying spirit and to the Negro, it's for deception. Now we want you to wonder why do you think they said Equiano was no longer born in Africa. That was because at that time the Negroes were claimed to be not human but beasts. So ideally it was not expected that a beast could have written a book. That's why you saw them telling that lie. But you see how they are coming today to tell you through the Calloway that the slave trade no longer happened. And further here we see that and yet in Montserrat I have seen a Negro man staked to the ground and caught most shockingly and then his ears cut off bit by bit because he had been connected with a white woman who was a common prostitute. 